Nous ne nous appuyons pas sur nos sorts, on ne demande pas que quelqu'un s'appuie sur notre sort. Le peuple burkinabé a décidé de lutter, de lutter contre le terrorisme en mesure de relancer son développement. How did Captain Ibrahim Traoré plan to fight terrorism in his country, given that French troops were expelled? That was a problem he needed to deal with before terrorist attacks escalated. However, he could not acquire lethal weapons, drones, and other military equipment from the West because of the resentment the West holds. That's when he decided to make a shocking decision. He vowed to build new allies and even steal some allies from the West, like Turkey. And now, Burkina Faso's military has acquired the most modern and lethal weapons to fight terrorism. This means that the West's plans to bottleneck weapons supply to Burkina Faso have failed. Now Burkina Faso's army will independently handle the security situation. But what modern weapons and lethal drones have Burkina Faso recently acquired, and how does Captain Ibrahim Traore plan to use them that has scared the West like never before? Let's find that out in this video. So, what weapons has Burkina Faso acquired? Recently, Burkina Faso's junta received a fresh shipment of combat drones from Turkey, aimed at bolstering the nation's anti-terrorism efforts. The Ouagadougou presidency announced the announcement, with local media sources specifying that the Burkina Bay military has acquired at least two Akinsi and three TB2 model drones. Additional reports suggest the shipment includes approximately 12 Akinsi and TB2 model combat drones, all produced by Baykar Technologies, a Turkish company known for its aerospace and defense systems expertise. Captain Ibrahim Traoré expressed pride in confirming the integration of these drones into the Burkina Bay military's fleet. He praised the TB2 model's effectiveness in combat operations and commended the Akinci model for surpassing expectations and technical capabilities. Traoré emphasized that expanding the drone fleet allows for swift intervention and continuous surveillance, enhancing the nation's security posture. Defense Minister Kasum Koulibaly reaffirmed the enlargement of Burkina Faso's drone inventory, emphasizing their crucial role in surveillance and combat operations against enemies. He expressed gratitude to Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan for the fruitful partnership, describing it as sincere and beneficial. The ongoing struggle against terrorist factions persists in Burkina Faso as militants continue their assaults on both military bases and peaceful villages. These relentless attacks have displaced numerous residents, compelling them to seek sanctuary in more secure areas of the country. Therefore, in an effort to fortify the nation's security apparatus, Burkina Faso's interim president, Ibrahim Traoré, has supplied a substantial quantity of Turkish Bayraktar drones to the country's armed forces. Following rigorous testing, unmanned aerial vehicles have been deemed operationally effective and will now be integrated into the ranks of the Burkina Faso Army. The successful deployment of these drones marks a significant advancement in the country's fight against extremist factions, providing invaluable intelligence gathering and surveillance capabilities to military personnel on the ground. Moreover, it underscores Burkina Faso's leadership's tireless commitment to leveraging cutting-edge technology to achieve national security objectives. But something that most media houses are ignoring to mention is that the acquisition of these drones was made possible through the generosity of citizens who contributed donations toward the procurement effort. This grassroots support underscores the solidarity of the Burkina Bay people in the face of adversity, reflecting a collective determination to confront the threats posed by terrorism and safeguard the nation's future. However, acquiring drone is not the end. To fight terrorists and clear territories, the Burkinabe military needed armored vehicles. Therefore, Burkina Faso recently acquired Norinco WMA-301 fire support vehicles armed with 105 mini guns from China, along with Norinco 81 MNMCS SM-1 self-propelled mortars. Observers noted six WMA-301s, accompanied by a WZ-551 command vehicle, as well as eight CS SM-1 mortars mounted on Dongfeng EQ-2050 light tactical vehicle chassis. The 105 mm WMA-301 is used by several countries, including China, Senegal, Chad, Cameroon, and Djibouti. Interestingly, the Dongfeng-based self-propelled mortars are not known to be in service with any other African nation. Minister of Defense 
Brigadier General Kasum Koulibaly stated that this delivery marks the first of five anticipated consignments under the Strategic Equipment Plan announced by Traore on December 31, 2023. What's more, to counter the escalating terrorist threat, the government allocated over 250 billion FCFA, or $400 million, to a local bank at the beginning of March 2023 to procure military equipment for the fight against terrorists. Since 2018, data from the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute CIPRI, arms transfers. Database indicates that Burkina Faso has received various military assets from multiple countries, including armored personnel carriers, APCs, transport aircraft, helicopters, and armed transports. These acquisitions underscore the country's ongoing efforts to bolster its military capabilities amidst mounting security challenges. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. But how has Burkina Faso managed to acquire weapons from countries that the West does not approve of? Well, Ibrahim Traore has steered Burkina Faso's foreign policy, which is based on cooperation with every country that can offer benefits to Burkina Faso. No matter whether a country is the friend of the West or enemy, if it offers Burkina Faso with what it needs, Burkina Faso will collaborate with it. It will not consider whether the West will approve it or not, because Burkina Faso is not a colony anymore. It's an independent state with sovereignty to decide what is in its interest. In a recent interview, Burkinabi President of Transition Ibrahim Traore expressed contentment with the advancements in military technical collaboration between Russia and Burkina Faso. He underscored the pivotal role of Russian weaponry in fortifying the nation's armed forces against terrorism, while noting Burkina Faso's newfound liberty in selecting its military allies. This marks a departure from the past reliance on traditional partners who often imposed conditions on arms procurement. Echoing Traoré's sentiments, Burkinabe Defense Minister Kasum Koulibaly highlighted the nation's increased autonomy in military decision-making. He pointed out the challenges encountered in previous agreements with former partners, emphasizing Burkina Faso's dedication to furnishing its defense and security forces with effective weaponry at reasonable costs. Koulibaly stressed the significance of sovereign decision-making in the procurement process. With the freedom to choose its partners, Koulibaly revealed ongoing orders from Russia for military equipment, indicating Burkina Faso's strategic shift towards cost-effective and dependable arms acquisitions. Asserting the nation's sovereignty, he affirmed Burkina Faso's prerogative to engage with preferred partners and secure favorable terms for equipment procurement and maintenance. Koulibaly outlined the evolving nature of military cooperation between Russia and Burkina Faso, expressing optimism for deeper and more transparent collaboration ahead. He viewed his visit to Moscow as an opportunity to strengthen bilateral ties and explore avenues for expanded cooperation, underscoring the growing trust and openness between the two nations. He discussed Burkina Faso's long-standing reliance on Russian weapons, stressing the importance of ensuring that new equipment integrates smoothly with the existing arsenal. He elaborated on the challenges commonly faced during the transition to new calibers and models. Despite these hurdles, Burkina Faso is not actively pursuing state-of-the-art military equipment. Instead, the focus is on acquiring effective weapons that have already undergone field testing. Burkina Faso revealed the cyclical nature of weapon advancement, observing that as newer technologies emerge, the prices of older equipment typically decrease. Even if certain weapons are no longer actively used by Russia, Burkina Faso considers them viable options due to their reliability and effectiveness track record. Russian helicopters, in particular, received praise for their ruggedness and ease of maintenance, making them attractive choices for African nations aiming to strengthen their military capabilities. Earlier, the Burkinabe defense minister traveled to Moscow to participate in the Army 2023 Forum organized by the Russian Defense Ministry. Reflecting on his experience at the event, Koulibaly highlighted the first-hand exposure to the latest Russian military equipment deployed in real-world scenarios. His attendance provided valuable insights into the advancements made in Russian weaponry and their practical application on the battlefield. Captain Ibrahim Traoré's efforts to secure arms from countries such as Russia, Iran, Turkey, South Korea, and China 
represent a significant shift in Burkina Faso's approach to national security. Traoré recognizes the critical importance of seeking weapons from alternative partners because the United States, France, and their allies have refused to provide lethal weaponry. This refusal extends to the extent of blocking the delivery of weapons purchased from elsewhere, leaving Burkina Faso in a vulnerable position. In an interview with journalist Sai Marcus Hervé Traoré, Captain Traoré, drawing from his experience as a former United Nations peacekeeper in Mali, highlighted Russia's willingness to supply Burkina Faso with weapons without imposing constraints. He contrasted this with other nations like China, Turkey, and South Korea, which impose limitations on arms sales. Additionally, Traoré emphasized Iran's readiness to supply weapons based on Burkina Faso's specific requirements and financial capabilities. The precarious situation facing Burkina Faso's military is further highlighted by Traoré's revelation that they have resorted to borrowing weapons from neighboring countries for certain operations. This reliance on external sources for weaponry underscores the limitations of Burkina Faso's military capabilities and its urgent need for autonomy in defense matters. Instances where the Burkinabe army borrows arms, conducts operations, cleans the weapons, and returns them afterward demonstrate the challenges they face in maintaining security within the country. Traoré also emphasizes the importance of prompt action in response to attacks, sitting the readiness of the intervention battle within the Alliancy of Sahel states. The formation of this alliance by Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger amid coup-related sanctions and strained relations with neighboring countries reflects Traoré's proactive approach to regional security challenges. Despite recent announcements of their withdrawal from the East African community, ECOWAS, Traoré dismisses ECOWAS as finished, indicating a strategic shift in regional alliances and priorities. So, what are Captain Ibrahim Traoré's plans? Well, that's when the West becomes quite nervous. It did not want Burkina Faso to acquire lethal weapons, and that's why it even blocked the supply coming from its allies. This was done so Captain Ibrahim Traoré can be failed in his grand future plans. The West planned to keep Ibrahim Traoré busy in coping with instability. That's why we saw a surge in security challenges in Burkina Faso that threatened its stability and sovereignty. But Captain Ibrahim Traoré committed to equipping the Burkinabe army with advanced weaponry. His strategic vision aims to build a self-sufficient military force capable of independently addressing security threats, paving the way for a safer and more prosperous future for Burkina Faso. Captain Ibrahim Traoré's leadership is marked by tenacious determination and a strong commitment to national security. Recognizing the necessity for military modernization, Traoré has launched a comprehensive program to enhance the capabilities of the Burkinabe Army. At the core of this initiative is acquiring cutting-edge weapons designed to strengthen the military's ability to tackle evolving security challenges effectively. Through strategic investments in modern equipment and rigorous training programs, Traoré aims to equip his troops with the necessary tools and expertise to defend Burkina Faso's sovereignty and shield its citizens from external threats. In pursuit of his ambitious goals, Captain Traoré has established a strategic alliance with Russia, a global leader in military technology and innovation. Leveraging Russia's expertise, Burkina Faso seeks to enhance its military capabilities through specialized training and the procurement of advanced weaponry. This partnership signifies a significant shift in Burkina Faso's defense strategy as the nation seeks to reduce its dependence on Western assistance and assert its sovereignty in matters of national security. By fostering alternative partnerships, Traoré aims to bolster Burkina Faso's standing on the world stage and strengthen its ability to confront security challenges with confidence and resilience. On se sent en famille en ce sens que la Russie est une famille aussi pour l'Afrique. C'est une famille parce que nous avons la même histoire. La Russie a consenti d'énormes sacrifices pour libérer le monde du nazisme pendant la Seconde Guerre mondiale. Les peuples africains, nos grands-pères, ont été déportés de force aussi pour aider l'Europe à se débarrasser du nazisme. Nous partageons la même histoire en ce sens que nous sommes les peuples oubliés du monde. Qu'ils soient dans les livres d'histoire, dans les documentaires ou films, on tend donc à balayer le rôle prépondérant qu'a joué la Russie et de l'Afrique dans cette lutte contre le nazisme. Pour ce qui concerne le Burkina Faso, aujourd'hui nous sommes confrontés depuis plus de 8 ans 
à la forme de manifestation la plus barbare, la plus violente du néocolonialisme, de l'impérialisme. L'esclavage qu'on tend encore à nous imposer. Nos dévanciers nous ont bien appris une chose. L'esclave qui n'est pas capable d'assumer sa révolte ne mérite pas que l'on s'apitoie sur son sort. Nous ne nous apitoyons pas sur nos sorts, on ne demande pas que quelqu'un s'apitoie sur notre sort. Le peuple burkinabé a décidé de lutter, de lutter contre l'île terroriste en mesure de relancer son développement. Dans cette lutte, des vaillants peuples, des vaillantes populations se sont engagées à prendre les armes face au terrorisme, ce que nous avons affectueusement appelé les VDP, des volontaires. Nous sommes surpris de voir les impérialistes traiter ces VDP de milices et de tout type. C'est décevant, parce qu'en Europe, lorsque des peuples prennent les armes pour défendre leur patrie, on les traite de patriotes. At the heart of Traor's vision is the creation of a self-reliant military force capable of addressing security threats without Western intervention. Through the enhancement of indigenous defense capabilities, Burkina Faso seeks to reduce the presence of Western and French troops within its borders, safeguarding its sovereignty and asserting autonomy in matters of national security. This strategic realignment aims to limit external interference and ensure that Burkina Faso maintains full control over its defense and security affairs, free from external pressures or influences. Armed with modern weapons and comprehensive training, Burkina Faso is ready to confront the challenge of terrorism with determination. Captain Ibrahim Traore envisions a future where terrorism is eradicated from Burkina Faso's soil, allowing the nation to focus on its development and prosperity. Through targeted counterterrorism efforts and decisive action, Traore aims to eliminate extremist elements and restore peace and stability to the region, fostering an environment conducive to economic growth and social progress. And in this goal, Ibrahim Traore won't compromise and won't shy away from confronting anyone who stands in the way, including other African leaders who act as West's puppets. The problem is to see a chef of state, African, who doesn't have anything to these people who fight, but who sings the same thing as the imperialists, in treating us as militias, in treating us as people who don't respect the rights of the man. The rights of the man, pardon. Nous nous offusquons contre cela et c'est honteux. Il faut que nous, chefs d'État africains, nous arrêtons de nous comporter donc en marionnettes qui dansent à chaque fois que les impérialistes tirent sur les ficelles. But how will this be done? Captain Ibrahim Traore has crafted an innovative strategy for Burkina Faso, mapping out a detailed blueprint to eliminate terrorist threats within the nation, ultimately aiming to establish enduring peace and security for its citizens. Central to Traore's strategy is the advanced training of the Burkinabe army and the acquisition of a potent arsenal of weapons from alternative partners such as Russia, Iran, Turkey, South Korea, and China. With these critical resources in hand, Traore envisions a systematic campaign to root out terrorist elements from Burkina Faso, addressing them one operation at a time. The initial phase of Traore's ambitious plan focuses on ensuring that the Burkinabe army receives advanced training to enhance their combat capabilities and effectiveness in counterterrorism operations. Through rigorous and comprehensive training programs, Traore aims to equip his troops with the necessary skills, tactics, and strategies to confront and defeat terrorist threats within Burkina Faso's borders. This training will enable the Burkinabe army to operate with precision, coordination, and efficiency ensuring the success of each designated operation. Already over 100 Russian military officers have reached Burkina Faso under the African Corps, who will train the Burkinabe army. Simultaneously, alongside the army's training, Traore directs his efforts toward procuring advanced weaponry from alternative partners. Recognizing the limitations imposed by Western nations on arms sales, Traore turns to countries such as Russia, Iran, Turkey, South Korea, and China to obtain the firepower necessary to combat terrorism effectively. Armed with a formidable arsenal, the Burkinabe army will have the means and resources required to confront and neutralize terrorist threats with confidence and accuracy. Upon the completion of training and equipping, Traore will initiate a meticulously planned series of operations aimed at systematically eradicating terrorist elements from Burkina Faso. Each operation will be carefully devised and executed, targeting specific terrorist groups or strongholds within the nation. Utilizing strategic coordination and intelligence-driven tactics, 
the Burkinabe army will launch precision strikes to disrupt and dismantle terrorist networks, progressively capturing territories and weakening their hold. Traore's counterterrorism strategy prioritizes precision and efficiency, with the aim of minimizing collateral damage and civilian casualties while maximizing the impact on terrorist organizations. By focusing on designated operations, Traore aims to steadily degrade the capabilities of terrorist groups, gradually diminishing their influence and control over Burkina Faso's territory. But how was the Burkinabi army and arsenal before? For decades, French strategic interests in Burkina Faso have focused on ensuring the vulnerability of the Burkinabi army. This strategy, characterized by controlling modern weaponry and conducting independent military operations, effectively hindered the growth of the Burkinabe army, leaving it reliant and underdeveloped. Through withholding advanced weapons and operating autonomously, French troops hindered the training and expansion of the Burkinabe army, resulting in a force ill-equipped to handle security challenges autonomously. This strategic approach served a dual purpose for France. Firstly, it ensured the indispensability of the French military presence in Burkina Faso. By monopolizing modern weapons and acting independently, French troops positioned themselves as the primary security providers in the region. This reliance on French support forced the Burkinabe government to depend on French assistance for its defense and security needs. Secondly, the French strategy aimed to prevent the emergence of a self-sufficient Burkinabe army capable of challenging French influence. By limiting access to modern weaponry and hindering army training, France maintained control over Burkina Faso's security apparatus. This strategic decision ensured that the Burkinabe army remained weak and unable to assert its sovereignty without French assistance. However, the emergence of Captain Ibrahim Traore marked a significant turning point. Traore, determined to strengthen the Burkinabe army, challenged French dominance by seeking military assistance from alternative partners, notably Russia. By inviting Russian military officers to train the Burkinabe army, Traore aimed to break free from dependency and assert Burkina Faso's sovereignty in defense and security matters. This decision was not merely tactical, it represented Burkina Faso's determination to forge its own path. By diversifying military partnerships and seeking assistance from alternative allies, Burkina Faso signaled its readiness to take control of its security affairs. At the forefront of all this is the genius, Captain Ibrahim Traore, who has made the West nervous. What do you think? Can Captain Ibrahim Traore train his army using Russian military officials and by giving modern weapons to fight terrorism in his country? Isn't it true that the Burkinabe army can be the first one in Africa to carry out sophisticated and organized operations against terrorists to regain territories? In the comment section right below, share your thoughts on what more Captain Ibrahim should do to have a stronger army capable of handling every situation in the country. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If so, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.